You're listening to episode 566 of the Father Bills Podcast. Welcome back. This week's episode is entitled, Wisdom, given on the 22nd Sunday in Ordinary Time, 2016. On one hand this morning, the scriptures give us a pragmatic, several pragmatic reasons to be humble, whether that that we would be more loved or find favor with God find prosperity, or to be esteemed rather than embarrassed or humiliated by others. That all seems to be very good advice. On the other hand, the message is much deeper. The parable told by Jesus is not just about how to live here on earth. Rather, he offered the parable so that we may get a glimpse of how God's justice and mercy work. For the sake of, for the sake, for heaven's sake, and I mean this literally, heaven is at stake. Our humility is part of the judgment of God for us at the end of our days. It is clear that the humble beat will be repaid at the resurrection differently than the arrogant. And Jesus' lesson was meant to increase our sense of communion. It would be eventually fulfilled in heaven where there will be a full communion with the saints in heaven, with the angels, and with the Trinity. His lessons were about the heart of our behaviors. Humility is essentially an interior thing which cannot always be seen on the outside. And so be careful. The outward behaviors may or may not demonstrate true interior humility. Someone may be very pious, but dry bones inside. Jesus may level this accusation against the Pharisees as pretty much the uh, most consistent one he did. They are whited sepulchers, we hear. All nice on the outside, but dead bones on the inside. And so we must take care, for some fake it with their own personal gain. They look good, they behave well, but inside there's lots of problems. Others act with humility and have deep love and concern for others in their heart. St. Therese of Lisieux gives us great advice in this manner. She, she says, do small things with great love. So we see how important it is that the interior be ordered first. And then what will follow is the exterior. In our liturgy, there are many gestures that symbolize humility. Well, humility, by the way, comes from the Latin word humus, which means ground. The ground, which is low. So to be humble is to be low like the ground. And so what do we do? We bow down. We kneel down. We look down. If you were to go to the Western Wall in Israel, all people coming to this wall, sometimes called the Wailing Wall, have to have some headgear, some kind of hat, whether it be uh, some kind of normal hat that we might have or what might be seen as more like a zacchetto type thing. What is that about? It's reminding the Jews that there is someone higher than them. It is a sign of humility. All of these gestures are intended to help us to move from the outer image or sign of humility to an inward one. Now, this makes lots of sense. Maybe you've heard this study, but if we were to smile, endorphins are released and we start feeling better. But often we want to feel better and then we smile. Try it. It's really hard, actually. I've been in bad moods and I go up up to the mirror and I I smile and I like, what are you smiling about? (laughs) And then I feel silly. 
And then I start actually finding it very funny. My little pity party has come to an end. But to do all these things, to be humble, we must lay down something, something that we're lifting up, which is keeping us from God. So what is it that you and I must lay down? Where is there arrogance in our lives that needs to be made lower or smaller? Some might say, I'm not arrogant. Yet saying that is arrogant. <laughs> you see, each one of us are victims, victims of this sin. It goes right back to the beginning. Adam and Eve thinking they could be like God. We probably all know somebody who thinks they are God or like God. And the crazy thing you might say is, well, that's our goal is to become like God. We'll never be God, but we're called to be transformed into his image. But nobody can escape the failure of humanity of arrogance. And for some, it is very easily seen. For others, we would never notice it. Mother Teresa once went to confession, and I have this story from his confessor. We don't know what he, she said, but he said after this, listening to all these um, confessions from the Sisters of Charity, there was one, of course, older lady, and after her confession, she peeked around the screen and said, now you know Mother Teresa is a sinner too. Can you imagine being the confessor? I'd be like, duh. See, for some people, the world and everything else is viewed from the perspective of appearances. That's what was going on in Jesus' day in that story we heard. Meaning, how is it they can be seen by others? Think about it. How often when we do things, do we calculate how this will be seen by others? There's often uh, some songs that have lyrics that say, sing like no one's looking. And I go, well, you know, that's cool. That's good. What do you do when no one is looking? Or are you concerned with your appearance? You can see how vanity can start moving into this. But let us be clear. God is not concerned with appearances, but rather the interior, the heart, the soul of the person. Today, we're going to lay down a child into the waters of baptism. Lincoln, who is amongst us today. By this action, the family humbly seeks out the Trinity to infuse the divine life into their child by the action of the Holy Spirit. Parents and godparents are taking these things seriously. This whole weekend, I call it you know, baptism weekend. Every Mass, we have a baptism. The parents want to raise their child in the faith. It will take sacrifice, humility, humility, it will take time. And as Pope Francis often tells us, we need to then journey with. And I'm under no illusions as a priest how difficult it is to watch parents try to raise their children. And this is why we then offer our baptisms in the Mass. One of many reasons is to let the parent know, to let the family know that we support them. And that's what we are going to do. In time, we would hope that openness and humility would be taken on by the child that gets baptized to eventually receive personally the calling that each one has received that was given to them in baptism by our Lord. And so I ask, Rochelle, if your faith makes you ready, your family, to then baptize Lincoln, I invite you now to please come forward at this time. Thank you again for listening to this episode of the Father Bill's Podcast. As always, you can connect with me by going to my website, fatherbill.org, F-R-B-I-L-L dot org. And you can find all the different social media connections. And as well, you can go right to that website and send me an email from the, the bottom of the front page. And so I hope to hear from you. Uh, and if you've ever connected with me, you know that I, I do respond as quickly as I can to everyone who asks a question or has a comment or whatever it might be on, that's on their mind. 
And until next time, may God bless you and have a great week. Bye-bye.